What we have in front of us today is something you don't see every day. It's a 29 inch VGA presentation monitor. The brand is VTEL. Uh, the date of manufacture is 1998 and the model number is SM-72A1 CN. Uh, I've looked up on the internet what I can find out about the monitor but there's not a lot of information. The company that made this monitor is still in business by the looks of it, VTEL. They have a website and they specialize in teleconferencing. What I believe they've done here is got a manufacturer overseas, perhaps in Taiwan or China, to produce a monitor for them and simply put their own stickers on the unit. You can see the VTEL logo, that is a sticker. And there is another one there as well. Uh, there are some controls down the front here. I don't have the remote for the monitor. The owner didn't give it to me, he probably didn't have it. It got lost, who knows? Uh, I'd certainly say it would have a remote as there's a little window there for infrared. On the top here someone's put a plate on there, I don't know what that's for, whether it's to mount something to it or join the TV to something and same here there's a little velcro strip. Around the back here we've got some ID, again there's the model number, also a chassis number C-72A, the 72 would be in reference to the tube size, 72 centimetres. Made in Republic of Taiwan, Republic of China. Then down to the connections. We have a RGB in or VGA in. That's where the Dreamcast is going in right now. I should mention that that's the console we have hooked up presently. And we have a VGA out, RGB out. You can daisy chain these two other monitors. And over here we have the power for the monitor. That is an IEC connector that's removable, quite handy. And there's an S video, a composite input, um, sound input for the VGA connector, and composite out with sound out there as well. I will make mention now that this monitor does remind me of another one that I've reviewed in the past, which is called the MoniVision. It's, uh, it's a bit newer. I think it's probably a descendant of the one in front of us now. The MoniVision's a pure flat screen, same size, but there's just a few similarities. That the plastic used in the moulding of this shell, it just it's very similar. You've got shielding on the back of the neck board there, so it um, does remind me a lot of it. Uh, it's nice to see that there is a Toshiba tube inside. That's made in Japan, always a good sign to see a Toshiba. Of course, you've got your speaker enclosures there. And chassis downstairs. Well, now, we'll actually have a look and see what it looks like. With this pattern up, you can see that it is quite square and converged well and fairly well centred. Uh, the only complaint I have, and I reckon this is because there would be some component in the TV that's wearing out, perhaps capacitors. You can see that that fuzziness on the edge of the white lines there. It's quite visible. I think that's just, as I said, faulty component, so I won't blame that on the monitor. But uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Give that a thumbs up. I'm not able to enter the service menu as I haven't found a method to do so. However, being a presentation monitor, service menu type controls are often available in the normal menu system. All we need to do is press menu and we get those basic picture controls there. Brightness, contrast, vertical size, vertical position, horizontal size, horizontal position, pin cushion and rotation, and bass and treble and balance are all there. So you're pretty well covered. Uh, I've positioned it, stretched it out to fill the screen as best as I can with Street Fighter here, and that's looking really good. People who are into arcade cabinets might find this tube and chassis combination very useful as a replacement in their cabinets. Reason being is that if you turn the power off completely, as such, monitor's off. Now I'll turn it back on. You'll note that the monitor turns on itself with direct AC power on. You don't need a remote to turn the monitor on. And not only that, 
it will also be on the correct channel that you left it on being the RGB input. This is not often the case for TVs with VGA inputs or, or anything like that. They usually turn on and they're in the snow, uh, analog, you know, RF, waiting to watch TV. So that's very useful for arcade people. I wouldn't normally worry about showing you what the composite quality looks like on pretty much any display. The PlayStation 1's hooked up now instead of the Dreamcast, and that's running composite. The reason why I've done this is because this monitor, and I think a lot of presentation monitors work quite differently to CRT TV VGA ones, the ones that are 100 hertz. Um, basically what I'm getting at is that as crappy as composite is, this TV or this monitor, sorry, doesn't introduce any of the artifacts that a 100 hertz television does. Uh, the scan lines are there. Uh, the, the movement of everything is smooth. There's no blurriness. There's no fuzziness caused by 100 hertz artifacts. Sure, there's a lot of dot crawl, but that's normal with composite. Uh, I think it comes down to the fact that TVs are designed at a fixed frequency or a range of fixed frequencies, you know, maybe 31 kilohertz and above, but this monitor drops down to 15K, I'm sure of it, for its composite and S-video input. I've tried RGB 15K through the VGA socket and I didn't succeed, unfortunately. Um, but and, and the other thing I make note of too is, you know, with computer CRT monitors, uh, when you change resolutions and the screen blanks out and you hear a click in the monitor, like a re relays activating, well, this does exactly the same thing. I think it's it's switching over to circuitry that will give it uh, a lower a lower um, line display, 15K, 15,000 lines per second, and then back on the VGA input, it jumps back up to 31K. Whereas the VGA TVs are fixed, I think, at 31K and upscale low res sources like this. I think that's the big, the big difference. It's just a pity that this doesn't do 15K RGB, unfortunately. Anyhow, I'll move on to PC next and we'll test out what sort of resolutions this thing's capable of displaying. I've been off camera fiddling around with what resolutions from the PC this monitor can handle. Currently it's on 800 by 600. It does have a bit of a wobble going through it so I'm not sure if it's fully compatible with 800 by 600. I don't seem to be able to choose any higher on this list. I'll see what happens if I go to 1024 by 768. Nope. Uh, the monitor goes into standby so that's too high for it. I'll cancel that and go back to 800 by 600. There we go. Still a bit shaky there. Go back to 640 by 480. Doesn't seem to be any problems there. 640 by 400. Doesn't mind that either. I can go lower to 320 by 240. Or it might have been 320 by 200, I can't remember now, but the only problem with going that low is everything gets really cramped and it's hard to navigate and you can almost get stuck in it. So it's got a it's got a range, it's got a few different resolutions it can do. It's probably more competent than any VGA CRT TV from 1998 from any time around that period. They usually can only do 640 by 480 at the most, maybe one more. So it's a little bit more capable in that regard. Not as good as the later Monivision that I mentioned before. I'm pretty sure it can go up to, um, you know, just over 1,000 by 700 and whatever it is. So not quite as advanced, but um, I'm just going to finish this by putting the Dreamcast back on because I think that's the best looking thing for the monitor. I'll finish off by saying I do like the picture the monitor produces. Like I said before, it's probably best for uh, arcade use in a cabinet, 
or for the Dreamcast, or maybe even just for MAME, or MAME inside an arcade cabinet. Really like the reds it produces. I think the Toshiba inside is is doing the whole set justice, and that's what that's what makes it quite good. So it's a nice unit for sure. And that's about it. So no doubt I'll have another video or two to show later on. In here, thanks for watching, and keep an eye out for the old VTEL.